The vast expanse of all of the world's oceans is ruled by one incredibly smart but deadly creature. Infamous for its distinctive black and white colouring, this creature is known to us as an orca or killer whale. The nickname killer whale instills a sense of fear, hinting at a dark and savage nature. And while they are feared by many ocean inhabitants, such as the great white shark, they are far more complex than the name suggests. Killer whales are not actually whales at all. They are the largest part of the dolphin family. The name orca is derived from Latin, ornicus orca, which means god of the underworld and champion of death. You would, however, be forgiven for buying into the nickname killer whale. Before we get into what makes orcas much smarter than you think, such as their military style hunting techniques, their incredible communication skills, or even their separate cultures, we need to discuss their physical attributes. To put it simply, orcas are big. Males can grow over nine meters and weigh over 10 tons, about the size and weight of an American school bus. Females are a bit smaller. Their streamlined hydrodynamic shape paired with their strength makes for a powerful stride. So powerful, in fact, they are the second fastest marine mammal in the world. Their large tail, known as a fluke, is also very strong. They can throw seals 80 meters in the air as if it was just a tennis ball. But perhaps the most jarring attribute of the orca is the force of their bite. The average human bite is around 120 to 160 psi. For domesticated dogs, it's about 700. Gorillas, 1,300. Alligators, about 2,000 psi. Great white sharks, probably the most feared sea creature by humans, has a bite of around 4,000 psi. But what about orcas? 19,000 psi. Now there is a caveat here, as there isn't bulletproof research about the bite force of orcas and great white sharks. However, they are researchers' best estimates based on examples and the anatomies of their bodies. Regardless of the exact number, their bite is up there with the strongest of anything on Earth. Despite possessing all these deadly traits, there has never been a recorded human death by an orca in the wild. It's as if they respect that we are the leaders of land and they rule the ocean. So yeah, like I said, after hearing all that, you'd assume it's purely their body composition which puts them on top of the food chain. But none of that is what makes the orca the incredibly unique mammal that it is. To truly understand how complex orcas are, we need to explore four key aspects. Their communication, social structure, hunting techniques, and their brain. The first reason orcas are much smarter than you think is their highly developed communication system, which consists of three core elements, with the first being click trains. Orcas use click trains for their mind-blowing echolocation skill. Essentially, it allows them to locate and discriminate between objects by projecting high-frequency sound waves and listening for the echoes. This is how it works. Orcas create the click by moving air between nasal sacs in the blowhole region. If these sound waves hit an object, they will bounce back to the orca. It will pass through a special fatty tissue in their jaw area. From this point, auditory nerves transfer it to the middle ear and then to the brain. At this point, it creates a map of their environment. It allows them to detect fish at a distance of 500 feet much further than sight in the dark and murky water. The system is so advanced, orcas in the North Pacific can differentiate between six types of salmon to find their favorite, Chinook salmon. Due to their high pitch, high degree of directionality, and the fact they are highly modulated means they don't carry very far underwater. Because of these factors, researchers believe they use whistling for close range private communication with their podmates and it likely helps them to orchestrate their military-style attacks. The third and most common form of communication is their pulsed calls, which can be heard from many miles away in the vast expanse of the lonely ocean. Scientists haven't scratched the surface of what the calls mean yet, but here is what we do know. The calls are very important for communication and coordination within each pod, and each pod has their own dialect. 
A pod is the term used to describe the group of orcas, which is usually their family. A study of Icelandic orcas and Norwegian orcas showed that they have 23 and 24 different calls respectively, yet none were shared between pods. Their dialect is distinct enough that scientists can identify a pod by their calls. And the orcas aren't born with these calls either. Calves will begin by making high-pitched noises which don't resemble their parents, but as they grow and learn, they will begin to make the calls properly. During the height of a hunt, orcas can use a combination of calls, clicks and whistles, showing a degree of a learned and complex language which allows them to communicate. They also use body language such as breaching, spy hopping and tail slapping to communicate with each other. Scientists hope that one day it may be possible for us to understand what they are saying and even be able to directly communicate with them, especially with the rapid advancements in artificial intelligence. Orcas share many similarities with humans and their social structure is a perfect example of this. Orcas live in families known as pods. These pods are usually around 14 members, but can be as large as 50, or in the case of transient killer whales, as low as 3. The males only tend to live to around 30, whereas the females can live up to 80. The grandmother is intrinsic to the group's survival and success. Every woman is born into their family group, known as a matriline. They do everything together, hunting, communicating and playing. They spend their whole lives in their family pod, but do occasionally socialise with other pods. But these relationships don't pass much further than mating. Unlike most of the animal kingdom, orcas stop giving birth at around 40. They, like humans and a few other species, continue to live for many years after they stop giving birth. At this point, the grandmother takes the lead, spending the rest of her life showing the family the best hunting grounds sharing all of her knowledge and even giving up to 90% of the fish she catches to the calves. Their expertise is becoming ever important in a world where overfishing has led to a decline in fish populations. It's their incredible brain which allows them to harbour the vast amount of knowledge, a subject we'll come back to later. Scientists believe orcas have evolved to stop giving birth at 40 as it made more sense for them to move into a leadership role Evidently, these pods are a tight-knit family, and they have been witnessed displaying an unmistakable sense of grief and mourning when a member of their pod passes. Their sombre cries echo through the ocean. Another part of the orca's social structure which is interesting is the difference between transient and resident orcas. Resident orcas are the ones we just discussed, large family groups which hunt across a specified location and tend to communicate with other pods. Transient orcas, however, are much more rare and travel a lot further in small groups. One group has been known to travel between Alaska and California. These orcas are much more quiet, hardly ever splashing, swimming silently and sometimes not even using echolocation. They tend to hunt sea mammals and not fish and stay a lot further away from the coast. Scientists believe it's a matter of time until they become their own species not because of geography, but due to cultural differences, showing the true depth of orca's social structure. However, the intelligence of the orca extends beyond their social interactions. Orcas have been known to hunt anything from fish to hunchback whales, and even great white sharks. In fact, great white sharks are scared of orcas. They will hunt them down in packs, ram into the side of their body which stuns it, flip it upside down so it drowns, and then almost surgically remove the fatty liver, leaving the rest of the carcass for the ocean ecosystem. Pretty terrifying, right? Well, great white sharks think so too. They have been known to not return to their hunting ground for at least a year if there's been a recent orca sighting. But that's the more brutal side of an orca hunt. The following two techniques showcase their innovative hunting strategies executed with near military level precision. The first is courtesy of Frozen Planet 2, an incredible documentary by the BBC. A few orcas from the group are used for recon, popping up in between gaps in the ice to locate a sea lion. Once found, they communicate to initiate a coordinated attack. 
there's only one way to get the sea lion off the large piece of ice and into the water. As a group, they swim underneath the ice but close to the surface, creating a wave which breaks up the ice. At this point, further waves are pretty ineffective due to the broken up ice, so the matriarch coordinates the group to slowly push the ice raft into clearer water. Even though the seal is now in the water, the job is not done. To protect themselves from injury, they blow bubbles to disorientate the seal, at which point dinner is served. The second technique was first discovered in 1985, just off the coast of Argentina. When the tide is high and the sea is calm, orcas intentionally beat themselves to snag sea lions directly from the shore, a place where the sea lion would expect to be safe. By the time the sea lion sees the orca, death's warm embrace is already upon them. Just for the orca to swim in such shallow water is dangerous, but intentionally beating themselves is almost a suicide mission. But for the orcas who have mastered it, it's an incredibly effective way to catch their food. Young orcas have been seen with an older orca, practicing this technique, making them do it again and again and again, and sometimes even using seaweed as a prop. It's always the woman doing the teaching, and they are always very patient. Evidently, orcas exhibit a remarkable capacity for problem solving when in pursuit of food. Creating and employing ingenious strategies executed with military grade precision. Orcas have the second largest brain in the animal kingdom, only behind sperm whales. They weigh in around 5.4 kilograms to 6.8 kilograms, which is about five times heavier than a human's brain. However, there is one thing scientists know for sure, which is a larger brain does not equal greater intelligence. What does, however, is a larger brain size in comparison to the body. To measure this, scientists use encephalization quotient, or EQ. And in that aspect, orcas come in third place behind dolphins and humans. But what's even more impressive about the brain of an orca is the high levels of gyrification, which essentially means how wrinkled the cerebral cortex is. The more gyrification, the higher the total amount of data it can handle and the speed at which it's processed. For context, a human brain has a gyrification of 2.2, whereas orcas is 5.7, the highest in the world. But what fascinates scientists the most is the orca's extremely developed insular cortex, the part of the brain responsible for emotion, compassion, interpersonal relationships, and consciousness. Again, they have the largest insular cortex in the world. Knowing all of this, it's not unthinkable to suggest that an orca's brain operates similar to our own, that they are capable of high level of intelligence and emotions as humans are, that they acknowledge and perceive the complexity and scale of the world they live in. It may just be possible that orcas are aware of their own existence, which is remarkable to think about. It's undeniable that orcas are remarkable and emotional creatures with an essential need to be with their family. However, the only creature that understands their maternal attachment are the ones with the ability to take it away, leaving them to cry for help. Not only are orcas under threat from our unforgivable desire to cage them for our entertainment, but we're also destroying their chance of survival in the ocean. Overfishing and habitat loss have decreased the amount of prey available, which leads to a decline in reproduction and increased mortality rate. This is particularly affecting the southern resident killer whales in the Pacific Ocean. Our devastating effect on wildlife is shameful at the best of times, but even more so when understanding the true depth of an orca. In many ways, Orcas are a reflection of the intricacies of our own lives. Where strength and vulnerability can coexist. Where sorrow reminds us of what's truly important. 
a poignant reminder of our responsibility to protect and preserve these magnificent beings. <laughs>